Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's like we never left. Uh, thank you for coming to Dial R's Sweetlick Tactics for your Eternal Evolution guides. Today, we're going to be discussing Endless Battles for August 2023. This is going to be the first iteration of the Summoner Dungeon, the Summoner Fight Death Hive. Someone in my line said that is a very metal band name, and I would agree with them. Death Hive. Okay, so I called it. We got a Summoner. We should have had the Summoner Endless Battle last month when we got Durali, but now it's here. Finally. Good. The last one. Now we got all of the Endless Battles for the different classes. All they're going to do is they're going to kind of keep rehashing this with the new released heroes. So that means we're probably going to get Energy and Hunters next month. Okay. So what's changed? Well, Durali you see here on the side. Durali is worth 20% 20, uh, 20 more points. Ampu 15, Daniel, Skur, and Hattie. But they did leave Sorvali off. She does not give any points. That is really weird. But that is what we got to work with. Now, let's see what the strategy is. Caustic Arrows. And this is the main boss from 1610 in Twilight. I do believe it was two Twilights ago. Right? I called it. I knew this was going to show up in Endless Battles. So, summons a rain of Caustic Arrows to attack the enemy each arrow deals damage and applies a powerful corrosion effect. So a dot, basically. Destruction energy waves. Inflict 1500% attack damage to all enemies. Shared equally. So that, to me, sounds like this is why you need to bring in summoners. Because that damage gets spread out to all the enemies on the field. Or all of your heroes on the field. And that includes summoned units. Achilles heal. So the boss's weak point damage from summoned heroes or wait, summon, it should be summoner heroes and summoned objects, mate, your summons, it has increased significantly. So you basically bring summoners. Uh, Trinity shares HP with the hive, right? So you damage one ad, you're damaging the boss. I think you can only actually damage the two ads. You have to damage them in order to damage the boss. Now, this one, there's a lot of nuance to this. You can tackle this in a couple different ways. Now I'm gonna run you through three videos. Whoa. Three videos on, on strategy on this fight. I have seen an additional fourth. I tried to get it to work, but it didn't work better than my other two. Uh, so two, two of these uh, strategies are probably the more optimal. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, the th we'll just briefly discuss the fourth one at the end of this video, and you guys can try it out for yourself. Okay. So let's get over to it. This was my initial team comp that I tried, right? I just thought, you know what? You know what we're going to do? We're just going to bring in all the triple S uh, summoners. Don't need a healer. They've made these fights that you don't need healers. Uh, and, uh, I, well, let's just let it roll because uh, it, we're going to go over my commanders and gear. I like this commander. Plus two ultimate Dan, plus one all skills. Uh, Ampu, and I do like all of the attack buffs. So middle or front, don't care where they are. They're getting 10%. This is the max uh, attack for uh, attack value you can get. Uh, in, and in the back, well, they're just getting a measly 6.5. And the support doesn't help us out at all. But four summoners on here. This was awesome in Guild Hunt uh, before we, uh, or when we had to run Kalaza and Senway. So this is my commander. I know yours probably isn't going to be as good unless you have an uber god roll, cool, awesome one. But yeah, you see I have a max out dominant nucleus and I have a max out ruler's ring. And then I'm using a horn of healing just because it is my highest level red prototype since we're not using a healer. Let me just pause that right there. Since we're not using a healer, just use the highest uh, red that you got for that right spot. Now, this is also an insectoid fight. So you do want to wear bug gear. So you want to have a two piece, at least a two piece, on all your heroes. So let's just run through how I got everyone geared. So Door Alley, Herald with HP hands, HP bug head, HP boots. Then obviously I got the bug master right here with 11% extra bug uh, uh, bug damage. Ampu, he's got his surge set, but we're also 10% increased the attack to uh, insectoids. Attack, we need that accuracy and 11% damage to insectoids. And then attack again, right? Uh, Dan, he's got his Madness set, 10% increase to attack on that, 10% uh, increase to attack on that, to Insectoids, and then just his normal Madness gear, attack, attack, attack along the bottom. So that's Danny boy. Skur. Skur is one of the heroes, you know, you, you could, well, I would say you might be able to get away with running a Madness set on Skur if she it can keep Hattie alive. 
Uh, she might be able to do that with her own native uh, uh, lifesteal. Give it a try. Uh, you might be able to get more out of this run, putting her in a madness set. But you still want some bug on her as well. You see, you got an attack helm, and I got 5.4% increase to uh, insectoids on the on the pants. And then Sorv. Now, Sorv, uh, for PvE stuff like this, I would usually run her in a full uh, Hawkeye set, trying to just to ramp up her accuracy through the roof in order to ensure that I get as many deer spawns from uh, summoned corpses as possible. So that is the reason why you see all this Hawkeye. There's her heal set right there. So you got nothing special on that bug piece. Uh, HP hands, accuracy, helm, HP boots. And then do I got any bug gear on there? Yeah, 15%. I should probably put that over on Ampu. In fact, I did after this run. So here's uh, one way to do the fight. Now, you don't have to do this on manual, but I found I got a lot um, higher scores on manual. Well, let me turn game volume down. There we go. Now you can actually hear me talk. So... Just make sure you got the bear, you're hitting everybody. Make sure with uh, Skur, you're hitting everyone. And make sure with Sorvali, you're hitting everyone, right? It does not look like I do not see an HP bar on the main boss. S even though they are... I, you know, I don't think the main boss has an HP bar. I think the, you have to damage these two, and then that damage gets transferred to the boss. So this fight's really easy. Just make sure all your heroes are geared properly. You do have to put, uh, <coughs> pardon me, Durali in the front. Because I tried it putting, like, Durali in the back and then putting Dan uh, and, like, Ampu in the front to try to uh, get a little bit maybe more damage. And it didn't work. They actually died. Uh, so the person in the front will take uh, more damage than in the back. But you see Dan, Sorvali, although Sorvali is also healing them. You see... Uh, they're not taking any damage back here. So this is the fight. Fairly, very, fairly straightforward. Just make sure those three are on manual. And uh, get your points. So let's fast forward. Once you get rolling, pretty boring. So this is, this is the first method I tried. And you can do this. But uh, actually, I want to go back. Let's just get my head out of here because I know people are screaming, your head's covering the damage meter. There you go. So you see, uh, Skur and Hattie isn't really, uh, and Dorley and Sorv, they're not really doing any damage. They're, they're not, they're just not. The damage is all pretty much coming from Ampu and Dan. Now keep in mind, my Ampu is Immortal 5 and my Dan is also Immortal 5, uh, but just get as much points as you can, depending on the level of your own uh, Dan and Ampu, but... Yeah, uh, Skur and Hattie is basically there to give the attack buff to everyone else. And then Do Dorali is there to give the attack buff to everybody else. And Sorvali is there to feed Ampu, right? That That's the point. And that's the da that's the damage, pretty much. So let's fast forward. There we go. So the first run, or first run with the summoners, or the run that I decided to record, 35.6 million. Okay. All right, let's just bring my face back here for a minute. Now, that's fight number one. And that is, you can do that one, but that's not the best one. So here's fight number two. Because people in my alliance were telling me, Jaina actually does a metric, <laughs> metric, metric butt ton <laughs> of damage in this fight. Now, since I do have a max dominant nucleus, uh, I was running dominant nucleus, but um, they were using, like if you got a really, really high solar flare, use that, otherwise you can use flowing rune, okay? So keep that in mind. The reason why I didn't is I did try it with solar flare and I didn't get as good a damage numbers as my maxed dominant nucleus. So, um, what's going on here? Why isn't Jaina on the field? Wait a minute. What's going on? Wait, this is the exact same one we just showed I just showed you. There we go. I don't know what happened there. That was weird. That was really weird. Okay, so Jaina. You know, just put Jane in some bug gear. 
There you go. You see damage to insectoids. I still got her accuracy helm. Yada, yada, yada. Attack. Everything else stays the same. So I just slotted her in where Sorvali was because, remember, with my commander, I'm getting middle row plus 10 attack damage. So, um, if you're running it like this, if you're running this comp, Jaina's pretty much going to take care of herself. You don't really have to worry about Jaina. She'll hit everything that she can hit. Uh, you don't really have to manual her. Uh, but you should still manual Sorv and Dan. So the fight is basically the same. It's just, you got uh, Jaina on here, nuking, and as you see... Oh, no, you can't see. Let me get my face out of here. Now you can see. You see that she is, like, doing decent damage. Whereas the last fight, Sorvali uh, and uh, Dorali and uh, Skur and Hattie weren't really contributing to the fight, but they were not in, in damage numbers, but they, they were contributing through their support roles, their support functions to the rest of the summoners. In this fight... What the hell was that? You see how that how it just went to the... To this video, my computer is being really weird. Why would it jump? So let's try opening this up with Windows Media Player. Okay. But so Jane is doing enough damage to overcome. She's doing more damage than uh, the support functions of Square and Hattie were bringing to the table. So let's fast forward. It's really weird that it's glitching like that. Just, okay, six seconds. Here we go. What do we get for damage? Boom. All right. Better. 38. New record. 38 million. So that's using, uh, again, Dorali, Ampu, uh, Jaina, Dan, and Sorvali. Again, if you don't have Jaina, uh, just run Screw and Hattie. Uh, door rally. I even used door rally on my, on my free to play count at like yellow evolution. So you can, you can use her. All right. So let's, I don't need, you guys don't need to see all my files and stuff. So we'll just bring you back over here while I get the last video skewed up. So this one's even better than that one. So I'm giving you a whole bunch of options here. Okay. Da -da -da. Let's go. Look. Okay. Final survey says final team is... Well, we got rid of Sorv, and we brought in Skur and Hattie and Jaina. Okay. So that's the only thing that's changed. You see, everybody's wearing a piece of bug gear still. Um, I do believe I switch Jaina to the middle, or I will, or I did, because she's going to get more damage output in my middle row than my back row. But just put her where you're going to get the most uh, benefit from the stats on your commander. So the whole point of not running Sorv here is you really don't need the healer. Um, you know, you're losing a little bit of damage off of Anpu. But you are going to be gaining the uh, Skur and Hattie attack buff to everybody. So it seems like that with Dan and Anpu's damage and then all of the damage that Jaina brings to the fight. And then you tack on Skur and Hattie's attack buff. You know, her attack boost onto the fight. You can get the most damage, and this is the one that I that I have heard that people use the the that is the easiest to use, uh, and you can put everybody on auto, and you can get like optimal points, right? Just quick and easy, dirty points. And you see, it's really not difficult. Um, nobody's dying. You see, Jane has got a little bit of health missing. I'm going to get rid of my head now for those of you that are damage meter snobs. And look at that. Dan is winning. Ampu is suffering because he doesn't have Sorv. That's just the way it is. But keep in mind, you're getting probably gaining more on everybody overall running Squirt Hattie than running Sorv. And, and you're with Sorv, you're basically buffing up Ampu's damage. Now it's a race on who can do more damage, Dan or Jaina. And in a summoner dungeon, uh, Jaina's not doing too shabby. Yeah, all three of these, all the three, Ampu, Dan, and Jaina are all up there in their damage, all over a billion each. So there we go, over 41. That's pretty good. I like to get over 40. And survey says... 
So I ran this a couple times. Um, this is more damage. I do believe the uh, when we first ran it with Sorvali and Skur, I think we got 35 or 36. And then when we took out Skur and we put in Jaina, we got 37. And then I do believe I've hit 39 with this one. I do When I moved Jaina up to the middle row where she got more attack bonus, I do believe I hit 39 and I'm trying to, to, to tweak it a little bit more to get uh, 40. But this so far is uh, what I'm finding to be the most uh, easiest and the easiest best comp. Let's just call it that. The easiest best. All right. So uh, let's... Uh, now my sound's all weird. Says that you can't hear the music. Now you can a little bit. So the other comp that I've seen, and I'll, I'll tell you about it right now, and you guys can can uh, check it out, is uh, I saw somebody ran uh, Ampu, Dan, and Durali. They they kept Jaina, but they brought in Rez, right, to pump up whoever they can pump up, right? Like you got to play with Rez. You got to put Rez on manual, uh, and then you got to play around with it. So you know Dan and Jaina were doing. Uh, comparable damage so maybe sometimes I didn't see a video on it but maybe sometimes you want to target Dan with res maybe maybe you just maybe you only want to target Jane with res I don't know play around with it see what you can do see what's the best for you see how high of a score you can get remember if you don't have a maxed or if you don't have a really really high uh, dominant nucleus you can run solar flare or uh, not solar yeah solar flare or flowing rune which are the two primary energy prototypes one's yellow one's red okay and we're gonna probably wrap it up right there you guys have listened to me ramble on this it is an easy fight you know like yeah it this it's just it's not hard just the hardest part about these endless battle fights is moving gear around and trying to find enough bug gear to put on all your heroes uh the fight itself is fairly simple um and then the assassin one's even more simple uh, when that one opens up uh, on Saturday, um, yeah, that one's going to be fun. Because that one, I can just put on auto and walk away. Uh, and I don't think the strategy has changed at all for that one. So I probably won't have a video out for IDAR. I will maybe, no, I'm not going to repost the old fight. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm getting off tap topic. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you complete the Death Hive Endless Battle for <coughs> endless battles for august apologize for that once more any comments questions or concerns put them down in the comment section below and uh we will rectify that i will hear you out but until then take care everybody cheers peace bye bye